Hey everybody, let's solve for the moment of inertia and product of inertia of this composite shape about these coordinate axes that are going through the centroid. So the issue is we don't know that location yet. So let's pick some other set of coordinate axes somewhere convenient. So for example, like we can pick coordinate axes here and then use the parallel axis theorem to get from here to here. So we can pick our alternative axes wherever we want. We could pick it here or maybe here. It doesn't matter, like there's no wrong choice, just somewhere convenient. Okay, so I just copied and pasted that picture, but I deleted those other axes and the centroid, so it's not distracting to us. Okay, so how about we just pick axes somewhere over here, like this. That looks pretty convenient. Okay, so we'll solve for the moments of inertia and product of inertia about these axes. Then we'll find the location of the centroid, and then we'll just use the parallel axis theorem to move to this from here. Okay, so first things first, let's solve for the moments of inertia and product of inertia about these axes. So I just grabbed this from the appendix. So it looks like three rectangles and this quarter circle. So let's start with, let's say, about the x-axis for this rectangle. So that would be about its own centroid, like this, 1 12th base height cubed. I'm just going to write the answer already. So about the x-axis, 1 12th base height cubed. Everything is inches. Okay, so that's for this rectangle about its own centroid, about the x-axis. But then we have to use parallel axis theorem to get from here to here. This far. All right, so plus extra. How much extra? The area of this, 20 times 40, times this distance between the two parallel axes squared. So that's 20 inches squared. Okay, so this is for this rectangle. Okay, how about this rectangle now? Its centroid is here. So about this axis, it's right here, 1 12th base height cube. So plus 1 12th base height. So here to here is 30, right? Height cubed. But then we have to use the parallel axis theorem to get here. Okay, so it's extra. How much extra? plus the area of this rectangle, 20 times 30, times the distance from here to here squared. So that would be 40 plus 15. So I'm just going to write 40 plus 15 squared. Okay, so this is for this rectangle. Now, Another way to do it would have been, instead of this rectangle, this rectangle, and this rectangle, I could have just said this rectangle, and this rectangle, and this quarter circle. So maybe that would be better. So we can go back and redo this one. I'm just showing that you could have different options. So instead, if we did this rectangle, then 1 12th base height cubed, would have been a little bit different. Instead of just here, 20, this base would be 50. So this number over here would be 50. And then parallel axis theorem, the area of this shape would be 40 times 50 over here. And then from this axis to here is still 20, so that's the same. 
Okay, so now this is this big rectangle, this is the smaller rectangle. Now we just need the quarter circle. So quarter circle about this axis is right here. Right, so plus pi over 16 minus 4 over 9 pi r to the fourth, where r is 30, r to the fourth. But then we have to use the parallel axis theorem to get here. So how far is that? Plus, well, this area, so the quarter circle, so quarter of pi r squared, that's the area. And then the distance here to here is 40. Here to here is right here, 4r over 3 pi. So it's 40 plus 4r over 3 pi, and this distance squared, squared. Okay, so that's ix about this axis. Now let's go with iy. Oh, let me make some space here. Okay, so I'll just write it over here. I, Y. All right, so that's for this big rectangle. Its centroid is somewhere. See over here. So about its own Y axis, what 1 12th height base cubed. 1 12th height base cubed. The height is 40. The base is 50. Okay, plus the area of this, 40 times 50 times this distance squared. So how far is this? Halfway of 50, so 25. Squared. Okay, so that's for the big rectangle. Now for the small rectangle, the centroid is here. So about this axis, 1 12th height base cubed, 1 12th height base cubed, the height is 30, base is 20, plus this area, 20 times 30, times this distance squared, 10 squared. Okay, now for the quarter circle, about its own centroid, is right here, i, y, this, pi over 16 minus 4 over 9 pi, r to the fourth, r is 30. Okay, and, and then parallel axis theorem plus the area of the quarter circle, quarter of pi r squared times this distance squared. So how far is that? Here to here is 20, here to here is 4r over 3 pi. So it's 20 plus 4r over 3 pi, and this whole distance squared. Okay, so this is the moment of inertia for this entire composite shape about the y-axis. Now for the product of inertia, let me make some space again. Okay, so about the for this rectangle, the product of inertia about its own centroid over here is zero. So zero. zero, and then we have to do parallel axis theorem, this area, so zero, plus that area, 40 times 50, times this distance, which is 20, times this distance, which is half of 50, 25. Okay, so this is the product of inertia for the big rectangle. Now for the smaller rectangle, about over here, its own centroid would be 
zero. Zero, okay, and then we have to do parallel axis theorem, the area of this plus, so the area, 30 times 20, and then times this distance, so that would be 40 plus 15, times this distance, which is half of 20. Okay, so this is for the small rectangle. Now for the quarter circle, about its own centroid over here is right here, one eighth minus four over nine pi r to the fourth. Okay, and then parallel axis theorem plus extra, the area, quarter of pi r squared times this distance, which is 40 plus 4r over 3 pi times this distance, which is 20 plus 4r over 3 pi. Okay, let me move this over. Okay, so now we have ix, iy, ixy, the moments of inertia, the product of inertia, all about these axes in the corner over here. But we wanted the answer about these axes going through the centroid. So what I need to do is find that centroid and then use the parallel axis theorem. So let's solve for that centroid. So centroid, Let's find the x component. It's an area weighted mean position. So for the this rectangle, the centroid is here. For the small rectangle, here. For the quarter circle, somewhere over here. Okay, so where is this in the x direction? 25 times this area, which is 40 times 50. Okay, plus where is this? 10 in the x direction. What is this area? 20 times 30. Okay, plus where is this? It is 20 plus 4r over 3 pi. 20 plus 4r over 3 pi times this area, which is a quarter of a circle, pi r squared, divided by the total area big rectangle, small rectangle, quarter circle. Okay, so this is the area weighted mean position in the x direction. In the y direction, where is this halfway up, 20, times this area, 40 times 50, plus, where is this, 40 plus 15, times this area, 20 times 30, and where is this, 40 plus 4r over 3 pi, 40 plus 4r over 3 pi, times this area, quarter of a circle quarter of pi r squared, divided by the total area. Big rectangle, small rectangle, quarter circle. Okay, so now we know the location of the centroid. So now it's just a matter of using the parallel axis theorem. Let me get our original picture back. Okay, so at this point we know the location of the centroid, and we know ix, iy, ixy about these red coordinate axes. Let me just rename this x prime and y prime. So if we want everything about these x prime, y prime axes, ix prime about this one is going to be less than 
this one, right? So it's going to be I, this is the red one, now this one. Right, so this one is less than this one, which means minus something. What is that something? The total area, which we know is this right here, right? We know the total area times the distance between these two axes squared. What is this distance? Y, the location of the centroid in the y direction. Y squared. And then that's it. Okay, if we want the answers about this axis, iy prime axis, then it's less than the answer around this axis, which means minus something. What is that something? The area of the entire composite times this distance squared. What is this distance? The location of the centroid in the x-direction squared. And if we want the product of inertia, x prime, y prime, about these axes, then it's less than the answer about these axes. So it's minus something, how much? The area times this distance and this distance. This times this. And then there we go. We got everything. Okay, hope that was helpful. Keep on practicing. Let me know if you have other questions, and I'll see you in the next video.